Oh, you who believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah. The pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan. Night of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf khalq Allah. I praise my Lord and I send prayers and blessings upon my beloved Prophet Muhammad, the most honored and the seal of the prophets. Blessings and peace of Allah be upon him. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, who is the one who had his neck being freed during that night? I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to free all of our necks from the hellfire to deprive us away, to drive us away our faces, our bloods, and to make our hair, our bodies prohibited on the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the question of today's episode is, what about your provisions, about the food that you eat, the, uh, the, the, the drink that you have, and the clothes that you wear, all the blessings that you get, are they are acquired through lawful means halal or they are things which are pr uh, pr procured or taken through unlawful means this is one of the most critical questions which is raised to a lot of brothers and sisters who are sitting in front of me right now and they know that some of them they have transactions which are unlawful some business which they feel doubt about it some acts that they feel that they are not doing and fulfilling the commands of the Lord. They feel shy when they do it. They start asking questions. What is the legal ruling regarding those business or regarding those transactions? Are they unlawful or unlawful? My dear brothers and sisters, this is one of the most important questions during the month of Ramadan. Why? What is the reason? Yes, because you are drawing yourself closer to Allah. You are raising your hands and making supplications to your Lord. You are expecting that Allah answers your dua. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in his authentic hadith that he mentioned the man dissolved of praying, serving Allah day and night. And he had his hands raised to the heavens, asking Allah in his supplications and prayers. And then the answer of Allah is issued like that. No, it's dismissed. Your food is unlawful. Your drink is unlawful. You are nourished through unlawful means. So how Allah should expect or accept your dua? To have your deeds and your actions accepted by Allah, you need to have a body which is purified. This body is purified through the halal lawful means. So that when you raise the hands, when you make the worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely accept it from you. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa has a very critical hadith regarding this. And this hadith is issued actually for a lot of brothers and sisters who raise a lot of claims, a lot of excuses. And they say, how should we live? How should we provide our families? How should we go? How should we do? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Jibreel, braised in my heart and said, لَن تَمُوتَ نَفْسٌ حَتَّى تَسْتَوْفِيَ رِزْقَهَا وَأَجَلَهَا فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَجْمِلُوا فِي الطَّلَبِ فَإِنَّمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ لَا يُنَالُ إِلَّا بِطَاعَتِهِ No soul will die until it fulfills all its provisions and all of its time or age. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَجْمِلُوا فِي الطَّلَبِ So fear Allah and when you are seeking Allah's provision, Seek it in the modest and in a nice and in a lawful way. Because whatever is given by Allah is only given through His ta'a, through His acts of worship, through obeying Him, through drawing yourself closer to Him. 
My dear brothers and sisters, the only call in the Quran which was directed for the believers, for the messengers, and for all the people is to eat of the pure and clear and clean livelihood that Allah has given to us. Allah said to the believers, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqanakum. O you who believe, eat of the good provisions that Allah has granted you. And he said to the messengers, O messengers, Ya ayyuhal rusulu kulu min tayyibat. Eat of the pure things that Allah has created. And Allah has also directed the same call for all humanity. This is unified call to draw closer to your Lord through a lawful means. Some of the brothers and sisters, they think that halal is something which is slaughtered in the Islamic Sharia way. No, by the halal we mean something which is compatible to what Allah likes from you. There are a lot of types of unlawful means of livelihood that the people are indulged in. Like for example, on the top of them, some of the people that they make a liquor or they have liquor stores or they make transactions and unlawful things like the pork and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger has have actually prohibited that absolutely those brothers and sisters need to return back to the basic advice of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam whatever is given by Allah is only given by him through his pleasure my brothers and sisters, there are a lot of people that they eat of the, of, the, uh, of the money or they take or devour the money of the others without a justifiable reason. Like for example, some of the people, they, eat, they take it through cheating, through swindling. For example, there are two partners. Sometimes a person has a debt and he does not have a writing for that debt. And he actually uh, leaves it and he does not actually pay it back. There is another call for some of the brothers and sisters who are living in the West. And sometimes they actually take the credit cards and they forge and they take the money. This is prohibited. The months of Ramadan cannot actually be accepted from a man taking a dinar or a dollar or a penny from others without a justifiable reason. Or with, without a halal means. The Prophet ﷺ said, anybody which is nourished through unlawful means will be destined for the hellfire. This is very clear and very critical. Some of the people, they actually acquire their livelihood through usurious interest. So they put their money, for example, in the bank and they take some interest. They need to be reminded of the ayah the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that in the Quran. الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ الرِّبَا لَا يَقُومُونَ إِلَّا كَمَا يَقُومُ الَّذِي يَتَخَبَّطُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنَ الْمَسْ those who eat the riba, the usurious interest, will only stand up like people stricken by the heaven. When Imam Malik was asked a question on what is the gravest sin that the person can commit, and he said, let me actually read the whole Quran for you. And then when he read the Quran and finished it, he said, I did not find a grave sin uh, more than or worse than taking riba, usurious interest. For the reason that the, those who take the riba, will come on the day of a judgment and they will be given a sword and they will be said, launch a war against Allah and His Messenger. Fight against Allah and the Messenger. You can imagine, can you bear it when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels give you a sword telling you, take it and launch a war against your Lord, against the most merciful. It is something which is drastic, something which is hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِن تُبْتُمْ فَلَكُمْ رُؤُوسُ أَمْوَالِكُمْ If you repent, you will have your capital. You will not be wrong, and you will not commit a wrongdoing against anybody. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, some of the people, they gamble, they make some gambling, and they make some transactions which acquired through gambling. Or buying risks. Some of the people, for example, they take insurance which is not acquired through a necessity. These types of transactions like insurance, insurance, or gambling, 
or those transactions are actually prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to be very vigilant. We need to be aware of how to pro protect our bodies, how to protect our stomachs from eating a piece of bread which is unlawful. And we remember the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was sitting with Al-Hasan, his grandson, and Al-Hasan started to take a date from the earth and he took it and he put it in his mouth and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't take it, don't take it. You don't know that we do not eat of the charity. The Prophet ﷺ was actually prohibited to take charity. And it was prohibited for his family to receive it. So he was aware, even if Al-Hasan Al-Husayn will not be actually accountable for those little trivial deed. But the Prophet ﷺ was aware. He was turning in his bed and he found a date. And the Prophet ﷺ was afraid to take it and put it in his mouth. Simply because he was afraid that may be a part of the food for the charity. My brothers Abu Bakr Siddiq, one day he received money from one of his servants or received food from one of his servants after eating the food. He found that that food was acquired through unlawful means that that man or his servant acquired during the days of ignorance, the days of jahiliyyah. So Abu Bakr, what did he do? Abu Bakr put his finger in his mouth and he vomited everything that he put in his stomach because he was afraid to put a piece of bread which is prohibited. Only a sip of water which Allah has prohibited. This is al wara This is being afraid of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has a great consequence on your family, on your children, my brothers and sisters. And I still remember the story of a slave. This slave lived in Kufa in Iraq. And that man, he was the guardian of a gra of, of, of a, a grapes or a, a grape vine or a garden. The owner of the garden came to him one day and he said, bring me a bunch of bread or a bunch of grapes. And he brought him a bunch which is sour. The man couldn't taste him. He said, bring me another bunch of grapes. And he brought it also sour. The man was amazed. And he said, you are serving me for 10, for 10 years. And you did not realize which is sour and which is nice to eat of the grape. Then he said, my master, I lived with you for 10 years as a guardian for this garden. And I was not actually appointed as a tester. I swear by Allah that I never ever tested the a grape, one grape during those 10 years. You can imagine. The man took him, freed him, and he made him marry his daughter. What is the result? The result is Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, the son of that blessed man who filled the books of Muslims with ahadith about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa I seek Allah to provide us with mercy and tranquility and to purify our souls, our selves, our bodies of everything which is haram. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, you who believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan, night of Ramadan.